I think that's the other challenge. It's really good setting all these process goals, but if you're not going to commit and have a plan of action of how to implement them, again, I think it's sort of a lost and it's another stress because you're like, you come to the end of it, six weeks down the block, and you reflect on it and go, oh yeah, we forgot about those ones actually. And mm. We sort of half heartedly did them and had them achieved. Them. Yeah. I would say that that comes from um, like a needs analysis. What what do you need? And I guess that so I guess you start with the outcome. Yeah. It's like one of those cool stories where you, you, the first scene is the end scene, uh, like a murder mystery. Yeah. Pulp fiction sort of. Yeah. Quentin Tarantino film. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What a guy. Yeah. Nice. Good enough. <laughs> Good enough. Um. So he. No, not he. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have good values. No. He's, got a record. He's a bad, bad man. Um, can't remember what I was getting at there. Oh yeah, prioritizing <laughs> needs analysis. You start with the outcome, so then you can work down. So you, you you break down from the outcome. So so let's just let's just take. Well, should we take a sub thirty minute ten k off a bike? It can't be done. I've tried. <laughs> Humanly impossible. Yeah, I've done it. Can't be done. <laughs> Defy anyone to, to ever do that. Okay, so let's not let's. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, that's let's good. say if humans could cool. achieve that. Yeah, well, so, yeah. You can do that. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Anyway, a sub thirty yeah. minute ten k off a bike. What do you need to be able to achieve that? Well, first of all, it'd be nice to be able to do a sub thirty minute ten um, k fresh. Yeah. And then what you need to be able to do that, you can break it down into um, like your 5k. So at the moment we're breaking down more outcome goals. Let's yeah. say you need to be able to do 3k in such such a time. That means you need to have a certain level of run biomechanics and, and form that enables you to run that quickly. Yeah. Um, so your processes stem off of that initial outcome goal. You're trying to run a 10k in sub 30 minutes off a bike but to do that you're kind of looking at the biomechanics of running 3k yeah. um, really really fast mm. and I think that's where you as the coach and the coach athlete relationship um, you prioritise where the limiting factors are what you can do maybe your run biomechanics are actually really good for 3k because you have athletes that are more uh, like anaerobic and, yeah. and speed orientated and you have ones that are more like fatigue resistant and aerobic and it's working where your limiting factor is where you sit on that spectrum where you sit on a spectrum of like swim efficiency or whatever it might be mm. and then uh, taking the low hanging fruit I think is a big theme for me yeah get that low hanging fruit because the, the things that are the limiting factors are generally the most if, if you're crap at something it's easier to improve upon that area than it is to improve upon your strengths in my opinion yeah so that's where you as you in that relationship address hopefully a handful of things so that things don't get lost um in the in the the, the many many things that there are to address you are yeah. addressing the specific thing so if someone's got a really really good kick and they're having the, their kick is kind of suffering a little bit because they're really working on their catch then maybe leave it yeah 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 no i think mm. yeah address your limiting factors yeah. first i think also when you're setting goals out like how you're seeing them like we sort of said about briefly about you know does the coach put them on the board are you talking about them having a visual representation mm. like just drawing it out even as crudely as bad a draw you might be I just find that worked quite well for me. Like if I actually drew something out, like a little pathway, and it's like, oh, something when I wake up in the morning, it's like, oh yeah, that's what I'm doing, and that's how I'm getting there. So, and then the milk still wouldn't be there in the morning. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but for me, even like not even in triathlon, but just goals in general for my like life, mm -hmm. I used to just put it somewhere where I'll look every single day when I wake up. Like say it's just a goal or like certain goals, and then I would just like take it off when I'm done it. Yeah. And then so like you look at it and like when mm -hmm. you wake up you get reminded like, oh that's something I have to think about when I throughout the day. Yeah. And it's just something you start the day thinking about mm -hmm. and then it might help you to achieve the achieve yeah. the goal that maybe your coach told you or you know whatever. Day and age especially when it comes to sort of what the first thing you see when you wake up, like having that over 
phone, yeah, check exactly. on Facebook, what is everyone else doing in the world? Oh, mm. let me get back to what I'm doing and having that mm. image is like, oh, that's what I'm doing. Mm. Mm. I think we're all getting worse and worse for it. Just, yeah. 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 I, from my own perspective at the moment, so that, that list that I make, if I, when I go to review it in the evening, I tick off the things that I have done, and then if there's something that I haven't done, then I have to bloody write it down again for the next day. I start off, like, it's tomorrow I will, yeah. dot, 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 and I write down what I plan to do and what my day will look like. Yeah. And if there's something that I haven't done today, then it doesn't get ticked off, it gets across through it, but it means I have to write it down for the next day. So. It, I think it's by having it visually there, having it recorded, mm. is, that, is that the R in SMART goals? Mm, I think no, it it's realistic. Oh. It changes anyway, all the time, yeah. But SMARTER goals yeah, would be yeah. the second R. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so by having it recorded... Oh, oh. Sorry, it's just James Siegel. Shall I turn him off? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, James. Carry on. <laughs> um, by having it recorded, then you become accountable to that record that you've made of you're trying to achieve yeah. a goal. Yeah. Um, and then if it stays there, if you just turn the page and I never look at the goal I didn't achieve exactly. again, then I never achieve it. It also depends on like the person, because some people need it like in your face, like and maybe you don't, maybe you're the type of person that likes to do the goals, but some people might need it in their face. And that's why it's good to put it somewhere you look every day. Yeah. Instead of having the thing that you have to look every evening, maybe they just like, oh, I can do that tomorrow. You know, they procrastinate. Mm -hmm. And it's having it somewhere there, then they're like, oh my God, I have to do that. And then I can only take it off when I've done it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, accountability. Yeah. Yeah. Basically yeah. comes down to. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's all this smart goals of where it's at, really, when it comes to it. So, like, are we going to do, have we talked about them? Like, what they are? Exactly. Like, you are the boss of smart right, right. So specific, measurable, agreed, realistic, and timed. It changes every I don't know, three or four years. Something gets replaced in ANR changes. But I think the running themes are: is it specific? So I'm going to work on my head position when I'm swimming because when I'm breathing at the moment, I'm lifting it too much, and it's something really clear that you need to do. Um, measurable. How are you going to measure it? So. I'm going to keep it checked up with videos with my coach and their input, and that's how we measured. Agreed. I've talked this through with my coach. It's achievable. Hello, James. Re realistic. Um, is it realistic? Yes, because it's only a minor thing to do, and I've shown progression in my in that area already. Timed. I want to get this done in eight weeks' time because it's a small change and it's quite achievable. Something like that. Cool. And that's what none of our, my athletes put down. <laughs> just put, I want to run this PB. <laughs> James Teagle, how are you? I got, I'm good, thanks. Excellent news. We've just been talking about goals. All right. What's your goal for the year, actually? What is um, to qualify for World 123 champs, and uh, you know, try and see if I can get top five, and to also just try a half Ironman and see if I can be competitive Ooh. in the pro field. What half are you thinking? Not decided yet. Depends on their race schedule and the selection right. policies. Tell me which one you're doing and I won't do that one. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me which one you're doing and I'll draft off you. <laughs> Tell me which one you're doing and I'll draft off you. It's interesting that he would say that as well, because they're all, I mean, we're just talking about like process um, versus outcome goals, right. but, and, and the, the, the relative merits of both, those were all outcome goals, really. Yeah. But, that is like that is the big goal. Like you're not, you're probably not going to come in here and talk about well, like, not splaying your fingers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> during threshold well, Obviously, sets. you know you've got like the process goals, and you you go through that with your coach, and you'd uh, you you know that's how you're going to get there. So you got your end goal, but you got your process goals. So trying to cut your process goals and get to that outcome goal. But you know, I've got my process goals as well. Like anyone should have. Who's, Are you, you know, how, how do you, how do you sit them sit down and do it? Do you just write them down yourself and then go and uh, yeah so I go so obviously I've been in, you know an athlete for a long time now yeah. um, I pretty much know what my weaknesses are in terms of yeah. and how my body adapts and how, how I react so I just go oh yeah this is what I'm going to work on this is how I'm going to do it I was competing and doing a lot of training I was I wouldn't really worry about my Achilles or looking after that because I wanted to hit a just X yeah. number of miles but run this week what you should have been focusing on is your Achilles because your Achilles is what yeah. Yeah. And stop you from being able to achieve That's your the limiting factor, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I agree with uh, having the coach there to keep you on track. Um, just, like I say, second opinion. 
if your dad's got a second opinion, yeah. someone would go, on, Rich, what are you doing? You need to work yeah. on your Achilles. Then yeah. you'd have probably thought about it and think, oh yeah, obviously I need to work on my Achilles. Just no one said it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there, yeah, there you, you take, you mentioned like them having that objective outlook. I think a coach can do that. And it's interesting when like you're coaching yourself now, you kind of, it has changed my perspective um, yeah. since I started coaching. That the way you encourage goals to be set by your athletes and then looking back with hindsight whether you were doing that mm. as an athlete um, which I find I but I guess that coach athlete relationship is founded on having those goals and being aware of what they want to achieve because if you're not on it and not keeping on top of an athlete for what they want to get well mm. then it's just never going to work is it mm. you got to want to achieve it yeah, yeah. 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 Without, especially in sport like triathlon about the motivation yeah that happen. Mm. you need to actually get out there and, you know why am i doing this yeah mm. how far ahead can a goal be do we think i think the yeah. further ahead the goal gets the more vague it is so you can go oh, i want to be in the Olymp- like a young kid yeah. and go i want to be in the olympics but you know that like, yeah, that's great but you got to set the the process goal, you got to go through all the barriers. Or, or 24 year olds can say that. Oh, yeah, also, <laughs> 24 year olds, yeah, obviously, yeah. Um, still have you, Jack. Uh, yeah, you just got to go through there. You got to have all those goals. So you can go, yeah, only at the Olympics, but you know, there's a lot of hurdles to pass before that. Mm. So that's a, that's a great goal to have, but how are you going to get there? Mm. And that's where yeah. the other goals are important. And, and that's also, a big process in yeah, itself of yeah. chasing points and mm. ticking the right boxes, yeah. being in the right place at the right time. And ultimately, you can only control your performances. You can't control what your teammates, your, your compatriots are doing, oh, yeah. um, which we've seen with people who, Brits who could probably have gone and contended for a medal, but don't get selected because there's another Brit there who's ticked the right boxes. Mm. So yeah, I think it's important, and that goes back to the emotional side of things. It, you sh- should be satisfied as long as you are hitting the right kind of processes and performances on the way to an outcome. Yeah. You can't necessarily control that outcome. Well, it's like, it's, it's got to be realistic, like you're saying, you know, it's fair enough. Like, oh, Jack, sorry, Jack, you're not going to the Olympics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're a 14-year-old kid. It's realistic to say, you know, oh, I want to go to the Olympics. When yeah. you get to 24 and, you know, you're not, you know, you're not one of the top in the world, yeah. is it realistic to say, I mean, it's still hope for Jack. Yeah. You know. I wish you were here when I was fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'll see. I think when you get, when you get older, you you gotta get more realistic with your goals. Yeah, I'm, I'm just settled on milk. <laughs> <laughs> Do you make your bed in the morning, James? Uh, only when my girlfriend's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, we'll probably wrap it up there then. Um, yeah, been interesting chat. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. Over and out. <laughs> <laughs>